Ooh, that looks tasty. You know what I've always wanted? My very own dojo. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that, but, um... You live in the middle of New York, so... Well, obviously, I don't want a full-size dojo. Get me a micro-dojo. Welcome, folks, to The Hunger Gamers, back with another Kickstarter preview. And today, we are talking about micro-dojo from Prometheus Game Labs. And before I begin, please make sure you turn your Klingon subtitles, because if I make any mistakes in the brief rules overview, that's where you'll find the corrections. Additionally, do understand that this is still in the prototype phase and is subject to change. Now, what Micro Dojo is, is it is a two player only, sub 30 minute strategic quasi worker placement style game. And you'll see hopefully what I mean by worker placement, because it's not traditional where you take your workers and put them on there. Now, if you are not interested in how this game is played and just want to jump ahead to my final thoughts, then you want to go to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of us still here, let's talk about how this game is played. Each player will select either red or green, and what's going to happen is on, on your turn, you're going to move one of these four meeples. Now, my understanding is that they're going to actually be meeples in the final version, but for now, they're obviously just these cardboard chits here. And you're able to move them orthogonally, and what's going to happen is you're simply going to move one, and you're going to cover another space. Whatever space you cover, you will take that action. It might be you gain resources, such as gold or rice there, two gold there, or you might gain a gold or rice and then be able to build one of these buildings, assuming you can pay for it, or you might take actions. And I'll tell you about actions in just one moment. However, after you move your specific meeple, you will then put your symbol on top of them, which lets us know that they cannot be activated again until that is moved. So in other words, if blue does that, that means green has to activate one of these other three. And then once that has been moved, they'll mark it, and then blue will get to move either of these two here, and then would move their token like so. Then you will be doing actions. Actions are very simple. Actions will either allow you to take an action that's on one of the buildings that you have built, which will show you directly on the building what the bonus is, or you can turn in five coins for one victory point, or five food for one victory point, or you can evaluate one of these objectives over here. Now, when you evaluate an objective, you always start on the very far left, and then it's simply we're evaluating it. We'll see who it is that gains that objective, and each of the objectives is different. For example, this one here is you take both players' amount of rice, subtract the number of coins from it, and whoever has the highest amount gains the objective, and you look below it, and it tells you how many points it's worth. So in this case, it is worth one point, and we'll pretend that blue had that, so blue would gain one point, and we would flip that over. Then the next time an objective is evaluated, we would go to the next one here, which is one point. But as you can see, you get more and more points the further up that you go. The game's going to end when either all of these objectives have been evaluated, and then whoever has the most points will win, or when someone gets to seven points. And that's it. That's how this game is played. So what do I like about this game? First off, I definitely like how small and portable the game is. I mean, I am zoomed pretty far in. I mean, this is just one of these X-trays that I got from the Cardboard Alchemy Kickstarter here. And this is pretty small. I have small hands, and you can you can see that. It's just totally covered. So it's very small. It's very portable. I definitely appreciate that. I definitely appreciate that it is very simple to play, but there's a pretty good amount of strategy in the game of figuring out what objectives up here are you going to aim for? Which of these buildings are you going to get? How are you going to make sure that you are able to get to do the actions when it is that you need to do the actions? And I think that really is a pretty deep amount of strategy, definitely in contrast to the size of this game. So I definitely do like that. I do like this kind of mix of strategic movement on the board and worker placement elements. Also, I enjoy that. I do find that fun. And again, it's kept very, very simple because there are a whole bunch of different buildings that you can put out and a whole bunch of different objectives up there. It does keep the game feeling fresh. Along with that, I'll also point out that there are advanced modes in which each of these different Meeples here has a different style of movement and effects that they have when they're out there. And there are also advanced objectives as well. So all in all, I definitely think that this game is more than the sum of its parts here. So what are my quibbles about the game? First one is, it's a little bit fiddly because these things are so small and when you're trying 
to flip them out. As you can see, I just barely bumped it and the whole thing moved and it kind of messed up what it looks like. And as you start flipping stuff, things just start kind of moving all over the place. And that's, oh my gosh. And that's just because it, it's so small and so tiny that it's a little bit hard to move things around. And again, I have small hands and even for me, I find I'm knocking stuff all over the place. I can't imagine if I had big old thick hands, it would probably be even harder. And the same thing as you're moving these things around here, it's very easy to just kind of move the board. Now, if these wind up being actual meeples, that will be a little bit easier though. How that will work with these things, I don't quite know. So it's possible this game is actually too small. But then again, maybe if these components are a little bit chunkier, it'll be easier, I don't know. And then my only other quibble has to do with the cultural aspects of the game. And this is something that probably wouldn't have been brought up three, four, five years ago. However, one of the things that we're pushing for and striving for in the board game community is appropriate representation. And I think it is a valid question to ask, who is designing this game? Are they from the culture? Are these images offensive? And the answer is, I don't know, because I am not of the culture being represented. What I do know is I asked the question of the designer, and the answer was, they are reaching out to people, they are speaking with people of the appropriate culture and trying to make sure that what they are doing is on the up and up. It is not seen of as appropriation and it is not offensive. What the end result of all of that is, I don't know yet. So I do feel the need that I do need to point out that that is something to keep an eye on if that is something that you are concerned about. I know I am keeping an eye on that. But that's it, folks. I think that assuming that the cultural issues are managed and taken care of. And I do have confidence that, it, that that will happen. I had a long message from the designer talking about some of the steps that he is taking now. So I have confidence, but I don't know what's happening. But assuming that is taken care of, I think that this is a fun little game and the type that I would absolutely stick in my backpack would be is a great travel game, a great one to take to. And if you're going to an airport or something, when you actually you know, People are going to airports again. And just a lovely one just to kind of have, a good one to bust out when you're sitting there over coffee. Because this is a game that, though it does have some good complexity to it, you can carry on a conversation while you play. It's that kind of game that you can kind of look what's going on and you can just carry on a conversation, just play and enjoy yourself as it's going and still get a good experience and still be able to be social. So I think that is definitely very, very cool. But there you have it, folks. That is... Micro Dojo, if I made any mistakes in the rules overview, please let me know in the comments of the timestamp. I'll get that into the Klingon subtitles. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.